What is up guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. We uh, had some difficulty moving around and I'm currently in quarantine. Uh, I guess I just flew back home. So just to keep my family safe. Currently quarantine myself for two weeks. But today I want to talk to you guys about just discuss my step one experience. I actually wrote this a while back, right? Literally right after I finished step one. I wrote my thoughts and reflections on it and got my score back. I passed. So thank God. This video is going to be just my reflections and it's going to be geared towards like what to expect when you come to the center and like what happened during the test. And I was looking for this stuff because like around the time when I was getting ready to take my exam, I was kind of searching around to see like what people's experience were instead of just well, how to study for step one and, and like what resources to use as well. That's not what this is about. This is about my actual experience and what went down during the exam. And there's like some little, you know, funky formatting and just using the, during the actual exam that was different from using UWorld and, and the free 120 and everything. So that's what this video is going to be about. Guys. Everything will be timestamp. I'm going to talk about my experience. So just make sure you go through the timestamp below and we'll, we'll go through it together, okay? So let's get into it, guys. At the Fometric Center, okay, I arrived around 45 minutes early, got my passport and my permit screenshot on my phone. You're gonna need a CID number on the permit that they give you. So I had it on my phone, but I actually suggest that you guys should print it out because um, they made me, you can't bring your phone inside the, the, the testing room and you're gonna need a CID number to start the test. So they actually made me write it down. The, like sticky note so maybe it's best to just print it out so you're using on your phone but if not then you can just write it out that's okay too and then they're gonna give you a locker key so this is gonna be pretty similar I don't know I don't remember if you guys taking the MCAT I took it a while back so I don't remember how it goes with the preventive center but I'm guessing it should still be pretty much the same but uh, this is probably gonna be the same process but I just couldn't remember it so hopefully this is helpful for you guys uh, they give you a locker your key to put your personal belongings in it and it's actually uh, I was afraid that the locker would be small but it's actually decent size it wasn't really big or anything but I was able to fit my knapsack and a lunchbox into it and also a can of monster um, so I was worried about fitting stuff in but that's not gonna be a problem just don't bring like a giant backpack I don't think uh, you, yeah, you probably, I don't think it's going to fit like a giant backpack. Um, what did I wear? I wore pocketless pants. So I just wear sweatpants with no pockets because it's going to make checking in and out easier because every time you go and like turn out all your pockets like back and front, they're going to like you know, pat you down. So I just wear no pockets. So every time I walk through, all I got to do is just raise my arm up and roll up my, my pants leg. So if you want to make it even easier, just wear shorts. And you don't have to like roll up your pants legs or anything like short like no show socks or something because then they can't really you don't need to roll it down your socks or anything and then short sleeve because if you wear long sleeve it'll make you roll it up but other than that it's, it's uh, straightforward so they're gonna give you the locker key to put your personal belonging in you should use the restroom before you continue on with the check-in process because then what I have to do I have to sit down after checking in after using the locker to put my stuff in you have to sit outside the room and then when they're ready, they'll call you in and they go through the whole security motion. They give you some paper to sign inside the room and then they'll take your IDs and then they'll walk you into your computer station and you can start a test with your CID number. It's going to be a first come first serve basis. So I came 45 minutes early but I was kind of just sitting there. Uh, I thought it was going to go through check-in at the beginning but it's not. So after you check in, um, you, you gotta go through the security process for you to actually be in. So I actually just kind of sat outside and kind of get my mind ready to use the bathroom. And then I didn't go into like right around when my time was supposed to start. But you can actually start earlier than that. If you just get ready beforehand, you use the bathroom, and start uh, and go through security right away. And you can just start earlier. So you can come early, you eat very early, and just go ahead and go straight in. Um, and don't dawdle around, you can just get started. No jewelry, you can wear a wedding band, which is what I did, but other than that, you can't really, you can't wear anything else. Um, earrings, no earrings. It's gotta be religious exceptions only, or like, you know, marriage, like wedding bands. Other than that, you can't wear any jewelry. They're gonna give you markers 
two whiteboards. Which you can request for more, but the thing is when you write on your whiteboards, you actually can't erase anything. So you gotta keep everything on the whiteboard it's there. You can't erase anything. They don't, they don't give you an eraser. They tell you not to erase it with your hands or anything. You need more whiteboard, you gotta raise your hands and they will bring you more whiteboards. Then you carry in your ID and your locker keys with you to the station. This station actually gonna have earplugs. Uh, it's gonna be the over the ear style, um, like a Bose headphone or something, but these are really uncomfortable. Um, I tried using it and they suck. Like, I hurt my ear after literally like five minutes, so I ended up not using it. I didn't have a problem with noise or anything. Um, everything's pretty much quiet. The room is pretty isolated. They have the earplug and then they also have a pair of headphones for you. That's gonna be right at the station and also very uncomfortable headphones. Um, also over the ears, so press against your head pretty hard. And you can test out the headphone as soon as you walk into your station before the testing will start. Like for me, they have literally have the oh, plug in your headphone and test it right away. I thought it was gonna be doing the, the tutorial mode, but that's not the case. They let you test it right away. You don't have to waste any time of the tutorial to try and listen to the sound. So make sure you test out the, the headphone when you come in before you start it. Another issue that I was worried about was using the restroom or like, oh, what, I have to go and I have to wait to get back in and out. But that, this wasn't an issue for me. But this could also be like site dependent. Maybe your site have a lot of people um, taking stuff on the same time as you, then maybe you guys are on the same breaks. Me, I didn't have any problem. It was pretty much just me in and me out, going out and going in by myself. So I didn't have to really wait at all during the process. Um, a lot of proctors were ready for me. That my experience with the Prometric site. Let's move on to the next part, which is going to be taking the actual exam. And here's where the fun begins. So obviously, I can't tell you what's going to be on the exam. But I can tell you my, my personal feelings and preference compared to UWorld and BMEs. I'm going to say that the questions were way when I say way easier, I'm exaggerating, but I feel like it was way easier than the MBNB questions. Not, not just like in style of questioning, and also I feel like in the fact, the, the way they ask it and, and the facts that they're testing you on. Like a lot of MBNB questions can be very vague and, and you, you can't really read what they're trying to ask you the concept of. All these questions on the actual exam, I feel like that wasn't the case. I feel like it was in between exactly what everyone said, U World and then BME styles, but leaning more toward U World style. It's well written. The question's not convoluted, and it's not, I feel like it wasn't purposely trying to trick you, uh, like a lot of the MBME questions do, and some of the U World questions do. The questions were not convoluted and wasn't trying to purposely trick you, which I feel like is, is good for practice questions because, you know, you learn better when you get you know, stuff wrong for practice questions, right? The beef that I have with MBME questions were that they're supposed to simulate the actual exam and they're trying to trick you on the MBME, you know, practice questions, which is stupid. So that's the only gripe I have against MBME questions. UWorld and MBOSS questions, you know, there were questions trying to trick you and once you, you know, learn those tricks, you can answer them right. But when you get them wrong, sometimes it's just like, oh, you know, you, you look at the answer and like, that's what they were asking me and you didn't realize it. So you were an inbox questions should you know trick you because that's how you learn. But MBME questions, come on, there's no need to try and trick you. Just make it similar to the actual exam. And I'm telling you, the actual exam, I feel like they were they were not trying to trick you. It's like straightforward and and just it tells you everything you need to know. Another thing is that the actual exam questions were a little longer. The longer passages were a little harder just because. They require you to synthesize more information and eliminate the weeds, but they were not necessarily tricky compared to the MBME questions. And honestly, for me, I can't even tell um, which questions were like experimental or not. Uh, you know, when you read a forum, people are like, "Oh, uh, you know, you can just read some question and like totally out of left field." And you're like, "I never heard this before." But for me, I didn't. Maybe I just didn't run into a lot of experimental questions or. You know, I just couldn't recognize them, but I feel like there was nothing out of left view for me. Everything was just kind of like, I should know this stuff or something, you know. I recognize most of the stuff that were tested compared to MBME questions where you just like, where is this even coming from? Like, where do you pull this information when you're reading the, when you're reading the answer that, that, uh, that's explained by like other students? Like, 
are you really supposed to know this stuff? So that's not the case with the actual exam. So you freaking out about MBA questions? Don't, because it's not representative, I feel like, of the actual exam. Okay, so let's get down to the technical stuff. Is it similar to Euro? Or is it similar to NBME? Is it similar to Amboss? Because you know they all present things a little differently, the way you highlight questions and everything. So let's get into this part because this is what threw me off in the exam for like the first half of the exam and I never figured it out. So for instance, you can, when you right click, right? So normally you left click to choose the answer choices. You can right click on Euro to cross out answer choices. But on the NBNB practice test, you can't right click to cross out answer choices, right? You have to click on the stem, on, on, the, on the body of the answer choices in order you have to left click it in order to cross it out. On the actual exam, I actually couldn't like right click to, um, to cross out the, the answer choices. I couldn't double click to, answer, to cross out the answer choices. And so I went through the first four blocks without, I, I couldn't cross out any of the choices I didn't know how. Like it didn't work, like I couldn't figure out how it works. What actually ended up happening was that you have to realize that you have to highlight, so you either like left click and hold it to highlight some of the words of the answer choices in order to get it to cross out the answer choices. So I didn't figure out that out until after like the first four blocks and I was, and I was like, oh my gosh, it's, it's so simple. But, but that was different, you know, that's the thing that was different, that's not probably on the exam. So I'm telling you guys so you guys know. Format wise, it's gonna be really similar to the free 120, free 120 questions that USM LA give you on the internet. So you guys don't know the free 120 are check out my previous vlogs. I messed up on studying and I have like a video. I'll link in the description or something. But it's essentially exactly like the free 120. Um, they have a break time and a total time and they tells you you take a break, but the, the break time will count down during the exam, the total time will slowly count down too. And another thing that I wish I knew was that you can actually invert the color to it, just like you were on stuff. Because when I was doing you, I always do it in black and white because I just easier and less strand in my eyes. So when I was doing practice, but then as the as we get closer to testing, I actually did everything in normal color because I didn't know if the extra exam had the black and white mode or not. But it actually does. You can actually turn it black and white in the extra exam. So that's that's nice to know. I wish I knew that so I can just practice black and white. It's just gonna be less strain in your eyes, um, I feel like. And I personally always prefer dark mode. Alright guys, so some extra miscellaneous stuff that I just wanna tell you guys about what happened with my experience. I actually ran out of monster after the first six blocks. And this was my fault because I always drank like one monster throughout my practice exam for the NBMBs. And I forgot that the NBMBs have only had like what, four blocks of 100 questions. So technically six blocks. So after six spot I ran out monster, which makes sense. So make sure you pack extra energy drinks or like coffee where you usually do. If you haven't run the whole practice test before, make sure you account for the extra caffeine that you might need. The timer breakdown on you usmle.com is gonna be great. I looked at it and that's I followed it exactly to a T and I had no problem with time at all. I had plenty of breaks. I felt refreshed after every single block. So I'll link the link for you guys. Um, check out the website and just you know read through it and see how they did it. But essentially it's gonna be you get a total of 45 break time, right? But you can add that 45 break time into you don't do the a tutorial, you just do it at home. And when you get to the extra test day, you skip through the tutorial and the 15 minutes gonna be added to your 45 minutes of break time. So now you have extra 15 minutes of break time. So now you have a whole hour of break time that you can use. And that works out great for me. So I followed that advice and actually did two blocks back to back and I took a 10 minutes break. I walked outside, get to go to the restroom, came back, did another two blocks back to back and then a 20 minutes lunch break. And then after that, I just took 10 minutes break after each block coming back from lunch. And that worked out perfectly well for me. So I uh, suggest going through that and trying it at home by yourself so you can like it. Okay guys, so that was my experience and what my thoughts were on the after taking step one after getting my scores back. I hope that was helpful for you guys. I know a lot of you guys are you know, freaking out about not getting the test date and just kind of worry. So 
save this video into your you know playlist and just watch this like maybe a few days before the exam so you kind of know what to expect what to go through post any questions you guys have in the comments i try to answer them yeah you just studying good luck just just keep working hard i know this sucks no one expected this um this extra you know study time might be good for some people might be hell for a lot of you guys uh but yeah you know look at the bright side thing at least you have more time to study right and everyone's in the same boat so thanks for watching guys make sure you like this video and uh, subscribe to my youtube channel just like the video so to help me with that youtube algorithm and until next time stay safe